Hey everyone, my name's Slick. Welcome to another video. This video is going to be a continuation of my leveling series. This one we're going to cover level 35 to level 38. We're going to go over the decisions that I made and I'm going to also give you plenty of tips that I feel are very important for any character at this point in the game. And we'll also go over some Elyon systems that you're introduced to to make sure that you're armed with the most knowledge possible. Now before we continue, I post Elyon content and other games every other day. If that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell to get notified when I upload, and at the end of the video if you enjoyed it, please consider dropping a like and a comment. Thanks. If you didn't watch the last video to get to level 35, I still recommend watching that as I provide a lot of tips and some general information that I feel are important for every player to know. I also want to preface that I am doing this from the Antari side, however I will be providing general tips and knowledge that will apply to everyone. As mentioned in the previous video, we're going to complete every single green quest that we get for an area as you will receive a reward after completing all of them. Remember that at this point in the game you can only start with one green quest and you have to keep going through them. The great part about these quests though is that they will complete automatically as soon as you're done with the objective. Again, I'm going to reiterate for level 3 rune sun boxes, I highly recommend getting your level 3 fate runes first. As a reminder, 33 fate gives you a rune attribute that gives 9 rune attribute points per every rune. So it's highly sought after. After completing all of the green quests, you're going to receive another blue skill attribute. At this point, you should be checking your runes, making sure that you're equipping as many rune stones as possible. You can also look to start upgrading runes from grade one up to grade three. I wouldn't go past grade three at this point. Uh, you start getting RNG after grade three, so I would stay away from that right now and save your rune stone dust. On the topic of rune stones, we're gonna be introduced to the training field. Stage one to stage 11 offer you a level three fate rune stone. Keep in mind these rune stones cannot be upgraded, but they are level three fates and they still can be used for materials, but you can also equip them for now. If you can, I recommend doing as many stages as possible. Keep in mind you can always come back to this, you don't have to do this right now. I'm also going to cover some gear tips. As we level up and complete quests, we're going to be offered more blue and purple gear. Keep note of the starting runestone slot, the most sought after is Fate. The next thing that makes an item worth is its random effects and the amount of enhancement slots it has. A gold or yellow enhancement slot will offer higher percentage chances. So it's highly sought after to get these enhancement slots as far to the right as possible. At this point in the game, I would stay away from enhancing gear. I would wait till you get later on into the game, say around level 40 to 42, when you'll start receiving more knights gear and you'll start learning about breakthroughs. Until then, just sit on the blue gear that you get. It will absolutely hold you over until then. In the main foothold, there's going to be an individual called the skill attribute merchant. This person will sell you blue skill attributes for 10,000 gold each. Some of these do have level requirements, so I recommend coming back after you hit it. Skill attributes can completely change how a skill works, so I highly recommend you coming here, analyzing what you can buy, and see how they can change up your playstyle. If you ever feel like your damage is lacking, it's most likely the skill attributes that you're using, so check that first. Now we're going to be introduced to the Mana Awakening Tree. This is where you can increase your stamina, your stamina recharge rate, your max attack, your min attack, and you can also get lifesteal with this tree. Keep in mind you won't be able to receive that right away, but it will come with time. So the Mana Awakening tree offers a ton of things called imprints. My early recommendation is to go for the Scholar imprint. This will give you a lot of early skill points, and skill points are very necessary. Yes, there are the Transcendent Imprints, but I feel that the skill points offer you way more in regards to the damage and versatility of your kit. I also recommend picking Destruction in the Mana Tree itself. That's going to give you that bonus physical and magic damage, as well as the 5% crit rate. Keep in mind that Mana Awakening can only be reset by a Mana Awakening Reset Scroll. Those can be purchased from the General Merchant for 50,000 gold. Now some quests will offer you friendship tokens, you will also get these from being in a clan. This offers you hunting XP potions, as well as offers you a pet if you save up to 1400. I personally always buy the 100% potions, however you can definitely use them on the level 4 rune stones and the pet. XP potions aren't going to be very valuable for you right now, but after level 42 when things start to get grindy, you're going to wish you had as many as possible. Time to go do some more green quests. I 
after completing these quests, you're going to get called back to do some story missions. At this point on the Antari side, you're given a choice of who you want to go do the missions with. I don't think it matters that much, but for those who want to follow along exactly, I chose to go with Carmen. After completing the quest with Carmen, you're sent off to another area. This is where you're going to start learning about the housing in the game. Now, housing storage is shared between characters, so that's a plus. However, storage space is limited. For more storage space, you can upgrade the storage in the housing area, or you can buy more storage with rubies. From what I understand, everything in your house is shared across the account, your missions, your upgrades, and your housing facilities. After completing the rest of the story mission quests, we're going to be offered some more green quests to complete. While completing these quests, you're going to be offered a mining dimensional portal. The premise of this dimensional portal is to collect as many gems as you can in the sky as possible. There's also going to be secret chests. These chests offer you house tokens. There's also going to be small and abundant iron deposits. Feel free to mine these. After completing all your green quests, you're going to be presented with your first ever growth support quest. These quests are going to give you purple gear, and they're also going to give you epic skill attribute scrolls. Now you can choose to use these epic skill attribute scrolls on your character right now, or you can also opt to use them on another character. Now this is a very big recommendation. I recommend when you're going to unlock an epic skill attribute, open the collection book and see what the most expensive ones are. I would recommend unlocking those first. Now at this point in the game, you're going to have no green quests or story mode quests to do. This is where you're going to become familiar with quest letters. You receive 20 of these every day at 8 p.m. Eastern. Some quests will take more than one quest letter, so make sure you're paying attention to that. Also, depending on the person you go to, your rewards will be lower or higher based on the zone that they're in. I will always recommend going to the highest zone that you can to get the most rewards per quest letter. I went ahead and grabbed the three hunting quests to help me reach level 37 quicker. However, if you want, you can opt to not use any quest letters and just go grind mobs to 37. As you continue to level up and raise your item level, you're going to receive chances to join in world events. I highly recommend participating in these because you receive breakthrough gear for doing so. Also, it's just fun to do world bosses with everybody. After reaching level 37, you're going to be introduced into some more story quests. Specifically, you're going to be introduced to the airship. Airship quests are very important as they give you pioneer tokens upon completion. Now, pioneer tokens can be used to buy luminous and various other things. You can gain a total of 805 pioneer tokens per day from airship quests. That's only if you're maxing it out at the highest limit. So make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. And I highly recommend going with a party for this. A tip that I want to make sure that you're all aware of is that in your house, you can actually teleport to the foothold for free on the left side if you click that foothold button. So save yourself some gold. Now, after completing all of those next region quests, you're going to be presented with your next growth support quest. Make sure you keep checking back for these. Do not miss them. They are so good for your character. That's just free epic skill attributes and purple gear that you're missing out on. While doing your growth quests, the quest does say to activate a Laurel. However, you don't need to. You'll still get progress. I just like to activate a Laurel because it's going to give you a lot of runestone dust from all of the white gear pieces you're going to get. You will also get other drops that you can sell in the marketplace for extra gold. Now, after completing your final growth quest, this is where you can decide to go pick up more of the quest letter quests or you can go grind mobs. I prefer to grind mobs at this point. I like to go to the highest level area that I can and also mob areas that don't have any ranged mobs in them. Also, since this was just after the growth support quest, if you did decide to use the Laurel, this is going to be a great opportunity to get all of the 30 minute value out of it. Early on, I recommend selling the blue drops that you get. Recycle any of the whites that don't have fate slots, but if you do get a white with a fate slot, I recommend saving that in your storage because you might want to roll that rune stone onto another set of gear later.
Congratulations, you just hit level 38. Now that's gonna do it for this guide. I hope there was enough tips in here and I really do hope that this video does help anyone out. Um, I had a lot of fun making a new character. I didn't realize that Warlord could actually be so fun. And clearing on Warlord is just insane. I wanna thank you very much for watching. Keep posted, I'm gonna be working on the 38 to 40 video and I'm gonna provide you even more tips so we can continue to remain efficient playing Elyon. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like and leave a comment below with what guides you'd like to see next. I post Elyon content and other games every other day. If this is something that interests you, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you get post notifications. As always, I want to thank you very much for your time and support, and happy grinding on Elyon. Peace.